Robot Boss knows what it's doing, for it is a kind and gentle hand guiding us to greatness. What the hell are you doing back there? Don't worry about it. Well, as long as you've got the engineer with you, you probably won't kill me. Sure. Today's manga is My Neighbor Seki, a comedy I can actually sink my teeth into. My Neighbor Seki is about Yokoi failing to pay attention to lessons while her seat partner Seki plays games at his desk. And by games, I mean elaborate construction projects that boggle the mind and occasionally defy the laws of physics. These craft projects usually end in Seki somehow avoiding the teacher's gaze while Yokoi gets scolded for not paying attention to the lesson material. Beat and pause for laughter. Even though I basically summed up the entire joke of the series, there's a lot more that goes into making these jokes work. It's an obvious riff on the classic double act of straight man in comedic performance, with Yokoi being the stooge to Seki. But while Yokoi functions as the main person, grounded in reality, being shocked by the most unorthodox behavior of Seki, she never takes it so far as to intentionally draw the teacher's attention to Seki. She is very annoyed by his distracting antics and wishes he would pay attention to the lessons, but she's no stool pigeon. So it's a lonely little world of two in the back of the classroom. Now the antics Seki gets up to are a sight to behold. It's not that his little projects are particularly noisy or that he's constantly trying to get Yokoi's attention. His builds are just too elaborate and enthralling to be ignored. The very first thing we see him do is set up an eraser domino set with S-curves, seesaws, and rope swings. All of this culminating in a firework tube that was thankfully not set to actually go off, Seki just imagines the fireworks. And then in the very next chapter, Seki is doing some Warring Kingdom reenactments on his desk using shogi pieces. It's not an actual shogi game, the king piece gets his head knocked off by an evil vizier who steals his crown. And then he activates trap doors in Seki's desk to trap his political enemies. That is a scary amount of prep work and modding of school property. Seki puts Rube Goldberg to shame. Sometimes the joke is drawn from how absurd the length Seki goes to are, like when he sets up a functioning subway inside his desk, or when he sets up an in-classroom note-passing mail service with note-size protocols. And sometimes the punchline is Yokoi having enough and finally pushing back against the Seki shenanigans. But more often, the joke comes from how invested Yokoi becomes in the little dramas that play out on Seki's desk. To be clear, the fact that Seki is creating and telling stories through his play is obvious. He seems to take perverse glee in setting up scenarios where the small and weak get crushed by his mighty creations. But crucially, we are not privy to Seki's inner thoughts or even hear him speak like ever. The point of view character is firmly Yokoi. Yokoi, in spite of herself, is very easily drawn into the narratives of play Seki constructs. She has to interpret what he's doing from the actions of the pieces alone, and often her emotional reaction is in direct conflict with Seki's. Whereas Seki likes to torment his toys, Yokoi bonds with them, especially if they are small and cute, and has to watch on in horror as Seki plays out his narrative. Like when Seki's Mondo Rook smashes through the white chess pieces without mercy. But then the brave knight climbs the monster to fight back, but oh no, it shook him off, but then the hulking piece loses its balance when trying to crush a lowly pawn underfoot. Basically, Seki is George R.R. R. Martin, and Yokoi is the fans hoping their faves don't get axed. Ha! <laughs> Murder. I can relate. The stories that get told on these school desks can be surprisingly enthralling. In one chapter, Seki plays this game called Fukuwari, a uh, sort of cross between Pin the Tail on the Donkey and Mr. Potato Head. Being a Time Lord, Seki of course has no problem getting the face absolutely perfect, even blindfolded. But then he takes it to the next level. He swaps out the hair for a pompadour, so now the man's a delinquent. Then he gets a family with a cute baby, all perfectly constructed, Natch. But family responsibility rehabilitates the delinquent, and he gets a nice, respectable haircut. Baby boys growing up, and it's so cute to watch. Is it just my imagination, or are the husband and wife getting farther apart in each iteration? Oh no, now the kid has become a delinquent! This family is falling apart! Why are you so hysterical? 
I'm sorry, I just get really invested in these stories. I do! I, they barely take up ten pages, but they're enthralling. What sells it is how invested Yokoi gets. She is our POV, so we are essentially getting second-person storytelling with her emotional reactions mixed in at the same time. It reminds me of radio dramas or campfire tales or live tweeting. The emotion of the storyteller is almost more important than the actual events. And sometimes Yokoi pushes back against the writer, I mean Seki. She got fed up with the evil vizier in the shogi battles and dispatched him with an eraser shot. Come winter, Yokoi sees Seki about to drown an adorable snow rabbit and takes firm action with snowball attacks and decoy bunnies. A reoccurring gag is a family of robot people who are much better at following directions than Seki. Yokoi gets very attached to them. So that's the basic format, and yeah, there's only so many ways to juice this orange. Some ideas get repeated, the shogi and chess pieces make reappearances, and the robot family is a clear favorite. There are some clever shakeups. This girl is introduced who is convinced that Yokoi is watching Seki with a deep, loving gaze. So Seki is telling a story which is being interpreted by Yokoi, which is then observed and thoroughly misunderstood by this girl, resulting in some funny bits. There's also this Uzawa guy who's a total space cadet. He will see Seki playing around, decide to hop in, and totally ruin Seki's plans. Then he gets bored and moves on, leaving the play area in shambles. Seki may be an all-powerful force of nature to Yokoi, but he buckles in the face of such utter disregard for his efforts. Seki's only other weakness is his strong belief in the supernatural. After his grades dropped, he proceeded to answer all the test questions with an enormous variety of divination devices. And of course it works, and he gets a better grade than Yokoi. Of course it would work! He's a time lord, he can do whatever he wants! We learn very little about Seki, as is appropriate for his otherworldly jokey presence. But Yokoi actually meets his family. His younger sister takes a sign to Yokoi, who is impressed by her burgeoning Time Lord powers. We also meet his mother during Parent Observation Day. She is very powerful and joins Yokoi in trying to stop Seki's contraptions. Hilariously, neither of these women speak even though they really should. As for Yokoi, we never really learn much about her, because this manga isn't about characters. It's not about plot. It's just a platform for jokes. They set up the format and will tell basically the same joke as many ways as they can until they run out of ideas. It's the nature of this kind of manga. This was an unusually fertile source for japery, but all good things eventually end. And that's My Neighbor Seki. It's a clever comedy that really delivers on its central gag. And if nothing else, watching Seki build his stuff might get your own creative juices flowing. What the hell are you building? It doesn't have a name, but it should help us colonize Mars. Okay, I'm Pluto Burns and this has been Eagle Land.